Uh, Joan, your study created a lot of controversy. Tell us what you found. What were the really big points? So what we saw was looking at nearly a million indoor basement radon measurements from 1989 through 2013. We saw radon levels fluctuating in the early 1990s through the early 2000s. And then around 2004, we saw radon levels increasing statewide. And not only that, we also saw radon levels increasing more rapidly in counties that had more of the unconventional natural gas development than in those counties that did not have any fracking going on. What is radon? Why is it so bad for us? So radon's a problem. It comes from uranium, which is a radioactive material. And radon's a gas that can get into people's homes, get trapped there, and when the byproducts of radon are inhaled into the lung, that actually can cause cancer. It's a known risk factor. Uh, radon levels also increase, though, in parts of Pennsylvania that had no fracking. Uh, why, why would that be? I mean, is there a distinction to make here between, say, correlation and causation? Yes, definitely. So the main way that radon gets into homes is from the soil that's underneath those buildings. Buildings that are on top of ground that has a lot of uranium in it are going to have higher levels of radon. So there are parts of Pennsylvania that have high levels of uranium in the soil, but don't have any fracking. And we would expect to see those places have high levels of radon inside the homes, which we do see. But aside from that, we have a situation where this industry has come in and could be exacerbating some of these known pathways because radon can also dissolve into water and get into the homes and it's been found in natural gas. Hmm. So the industry has the potential to increase some of these pathways into homes and that's what we are trying to look at with our study. Mm -hmm. Now there was a 2015 uh, Department of Environmental Protection report that sort of tried to debunk what you said, said that there's very little potential for additional radon exposure to the public from the Marcellus Shale, which is what is in Pennsylvania. They only sampled a handful of wells, but they did direct samples. Um, what is your response to this kind of criticism, that theirs is more accurate? Well, no, they did a very important study, and I think it's an important complement to ours. It, what they found is also reassuring. They just took the polar opposite approach to what we did. They went to 34 wells and did a lot of very careful sampling there. They looked at the natural gas coming out of the wells. They took ambient air samples. They looked at the liquids coming out of the ground after fracking had occurred. And they didn't find concerning levels of radon in those 34 wells. Our concern was that there's actually been over 7,000 wells drilled in the state since 2005. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about the cumulative impacts of this fracking industry, Looking at just 34 wells doesn't seem sufficient to us. It could be about the hundreds of wells surrounding buildings. And so what we did was use nearly a million measurements, used big data to try to look at long-term trends.